I begin my journey right from here to the city of Sialkot, the birthplace of Iqbal. Perhaps in this travel, I would be able to show some special features of that righteous man. Today, Sialkot is a city in Punjab, Pakistan. The city, when Iqbal was born, was part of India. Oh, you who are familiar with me, come with me to the childhood alleys. Tread on memory's pathway. Come with me to my intimate alley. In my childhood home, on roofs quite stranger to all noises. Here is the very room wherein Iqbal was born on the 9th of November 1877 at 5.14 a.m. The house here was built by his grandfather, Sheikh Muhammad Rafiq. He was the first to occupy the house. On the 6th of February, 1861, he bought three small rooms and a house near here until Iqbal was born. Later, Iqbal's elder brother came here. The house has undergone no change since then. Encouraged by his father, Muhammad Iqbal learned the Qur'an from his very childhood in Hissam ad Mosque of Kashmiris. Basic lessons were learned at home, as Iqbal says this was the best period of his lifetime, because under his father's support, his thinking foundations became established. Sialkot's graveyard tells years later, when his father died, the story of Iqbal's attachment. Sialkot, a city in northeastern Punjab province, located at the foot of the snow-clad Kashmiri mountain. It was here, in this crowded city, where Allama Iqbal's first educational basis took root. Having received his first training by father, and such a great teacher, as Molina Mir Hassan. The young Muhammad entered Scotch Mission School to start his official education therein. The school's premises, against passage of centuries, keeps the same shape as it used to have. He finished his high school here in 1891. Then in 1893, he completed his 10th grade, and it was here where he finally ended his high school education in 1895 and got his high school diploma. Iqbal found an Islamic world a special thought. At the present time, we are living in a place so blessed as it witnessed Iqbal, the learned, for five years. At a time when Iqbal arrived here from Sialkut to enroll for BA, the state university here had this one dormitory only. Iqbal lived here for five years. I mean, his presence here lasted about five years. He then enrolled for MA in philosophy. He completed his MA right here. In fact, spent both his B.A. and M.A. here in this dormitory, in this very dormitory. Having received his Doctor of Philosophy, Iqbal returned at the age of 31 to Lahore. Never did he hesitate to return home, contrary to some students of that time. He left England quickly, he was then licensed to practice attorneyship and became a member of Lahore Bar Association. Three years later, he became a lecturer in philosophy at Lahore University. He resigned after a while to exclusively practice as an attorney. This way, he was able to freely publish his thoughts. He continuously thought about finding a way to awaken Muslims taken captive by colonialism. Allama ne ek mauke par yahan Punjab 
Allama ran for Punjab parliament election. As he said, he hated political activities and Muslims' needs forced him to enter the political arena. Consequently, he joined the Muslim League party. He succeeded to become an MP for Punjab province for three years. During that time, he tried to solve Muslims' problems. Iqbal used to talk on such problems. Allama Iqbal nurtured the wish for an independent Pakistan. He would say a new country, an Islamic country, would come into existence on the world map. The country's name, he would say, will be Pakistan. Iqbal did not give this name to a new country, but surely he had it as a Muslim country in mind. Iqbal's message is addressed only to the youth. He calls them Royal Falcons. As held by Iqbal, the Royal Falcon has five characteristics. Iqbal wants the youth to catch hold of Falcon's characteristics as much as possible. The five good attributes of the Royal Falcon, as seen by Iqbal, are flying high. So, Iqbal wants the youth to fly high for sure. The second attribute is keen eyesight. The youth can fly high only if they have keen eyesight. Its third attribute is that it does not build a nest nor does it follow richness. The fourth attribute, it loves solitude, as it is a source of creativity. The last attribute as told by Iqbal of the Royal Falcon is, it does not eat the prey hunted by others. Iqbal wants the youth to show these five attributes. Allama's poetry consists of certain periods. His poetry was at first as the poetry of the day. He would say at that time, my Urdu poems are like a building made of clay. Little by little, his Persian poems came into existence. Among the first Persian poems were the familiar secrets and the mysteries of rapture. Such poems end with Javid Nome, or perhaps with what can be done, O Eastern people. The first, those who are absolutely meaning oriented. Iqbal, as a poet, is highly accomplished. He has bridged the gap between wisdom and heart. The second, those who are pedantic. Meaning is absent in their poems. They pay attention to words and nothing more. His poems touch the reader's sensations. Because they are so meaningful and precede even the thoughts forming in their minds. The third, those whose poems are full of both words and meanings. Mr. Hafiz. From among them, we can name Hafez and Saadi. Such senses calm mind, imagination, and consequently heart. This is a rare attribute seen in such great poets as Hafez and Rumi. The attribute is common in all Iqbal's poems. 
Allama Iqbal has mastery not only over words, but also over various meanings, meanings which come out of him and are derived from his thoughts. His meaning-oriented poems outnumber his other types of poems, just as Rumi's. Iqbal says, there is no comparison between the melody and me. Speaking is only a pretext. I am pulling the camel, which has no rain. Allama Iqbal, with a faith in Islam and a reasonable Gnostic faith indicating his deep certitude in God's sovereignty, moves his mind to search for secrets and mysteries of the creation. In his Islamic Gnostic poems and such verified stories as the souvenir of Hijaz, the Eastern message, the familiar secrets, and the mysteries of rapture, he talks about the principles of internal ontology of things, an idealization of the existential world. While his thoughts are at the height of their powers, he invites Muslims to solidify familiar philosophy exactly in accordance to monotheism, to bring about a new perspective, a new worldview into the Islamic world. So many memories are related to this house. My father came to live in this house when he was 11. Now what sort of memory do you want me to tell you? Talking about Iqbal's thoughts reminds us of the familiar thoughts as his central train of thought. We hear Iqbal saying, to a mullah, a denier of God is an unbeliever. To me, more unbeliever is he who denies his own self. Just ask, what is Iqbal's philosophy? The answer is, the philosophy of your own. Iqbal's philosophy is in fact the philosophy of one's own, or familiar philosophy. What is familiar philosophy? That you know your origin very well. This house originally belonged to my father, Javid Iqbal. The house title deed had already been issued to my grandmother. Upon the death of my grandmother, the deed was transferred to my father. Allama Iqbal would live here as my father's tenant. He paid the rent to my father every month or every three months. Never did I lose my interest in my native land's people. My best time was when I was among people to see them struggle hard to earn their living. I was inspired by their uproar in the Anarkli district. Loftier than the heavens is the station of man, and the beginning of education is respect for man. Iqbal lays heavy emphasis on the familiar secrets and mysteries of rapture. Familiarity, as seen by Gnostics, means to entertain the self, to fully know the self. It's a famous statement that knowing the self is meant knowing God. Iqbal emphasized, first and foremost, returning to the self. Search within yourself in order to know the self. Iqbal invites us to know ourselves before doing anything else anything else. We shall heighten ourselves to become a human being, Paul Excellence. From God's own being, the self got a being so. From God's own show, to self, he gave a show. About this shining pearl, I know not where. It could be then without a river there. Iqbal meant to look carefully at human beings on the one hand and to look carefully at Islamic ideology on the other hand. For that very reason, we see Iqbal describing in detail the Eastern society and the essence of Islamic thought. Who is a selected man? A selected man is the one who is searched for by God. He is in a form desired by God. God wants that kind of human being. This is possible only if man searches for himself, to train himself in a desirable way 
to maintain the self, to try hard to fully understand the self. This way finally leads to knowing well the Supreme Being. The greatest message of Iqbal, as expressed in his poems, is to know yourself to turn to your own self, to know the East, not the West. इस घर की तामीर हमारी दादी की ख्वाहिश पे की गई थी पर वो इस घर में दिस हाउस वॉज बिल्ड अंडर माई ग्रैंड मदर विश उनकी यहाँ पे बीमार बट ओनली फॉर टू और थ्री डेज शी लिव थी She was sick when they carried her in a car, but she survived only for two or three days. At the age of 11, my father lost his mother when my aunt was about six years old. My father and my aunt would come here every day to see Alame, who was lying on this bed. Alame called them, and my aunt would come up to Alame, and my father would sit on the other side of the bed. This way, Alame would feel comfortable. I usually went to see them after school. Alame was always lying on his bed and resting. I was always beside him. Other people would also go there. Many came here to see him. Among them, General Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Jawaharlal Nehru, Muhammad Ali Jawhar, and many other intimate friends of Allama. Allama Sahab, अपने बिस्तर पे बैठते थे और they would come here just before or after midday to have a chat with Allama about topics like poetry, philosophy, or any other things. तो Alama spent his last days of life here. वो इस घर में गुजरा। इसी तरह जब आखरी रात थी अलामा साहब की, तो वो दोनों बच्चे इसी दरवाजे पे आए। Then came the last night of Alama's life. His two children came to have their last look at him. मिलने के लिए आया हुआ था। Alama was still conscious. Someone from Germany had come to see him, a friend of his or his teacher. The German called the two children and hugged them. My father was leaving the room, but my aunt wasn't. She wanted to stay with him for a while. At the time, I felt I had to stay with Alama and to sit there motionlessly. Our tutor, Aunt Doris, came there to take me with her. I told her, I will stay here at least for a while. Alama told the tutor she knows that this is the last meeting between the father and the daughter. That is why she doesn't want to leave. Let her stay. She knows this is the last time she sees her father. And finally, I felt something was going to happen. For that very reason, I didn't want to leave the place. Early in the morning, Alama passed away. The muezzin was calling out the morning adhan. Here, beside this bed, was standing his close friend, Ali Bakhsh. There were some other friends too, although most of them were saying their morning prayers at the mosque at that time. Back then, the mosque was more like a house than anything else. Friends were there to say their prayers in congregation. After their prayers, Alama passed away. His last words were the two testimonies. Then his soul flew to the sky. I personally suppose people like Alama will come to this world several centuries later.